Welcome to What God Can Do Ministries. Today I want to talk about something dear to my heart, my wife, who's gone home to be with the Lord. Two years ago, she passed on to glory and beat me to it. And I want to share part of her life. You know, what we are lives on. That which is eternal that's been done in people's lives, that God has used a person to do and to speak, that is eternal and lives on. And my wife isn't dead, she's alive. Because absent from the body, you're present with the Lord. And so I want to share a living testimony, uh, not something of the past, because we have eternal life. And that life is eternal. And when we step out of this body, we step into glory. You must understand that. So many people feel, oh, it's over. No. It's just separation for a moment. And my wife and I um, lived a strange life. My wife was born in Uganda of missionary parents. They worked with CMS. And um, she grew up um, in her early childhood there and used to love Uganda. And then when the, um, my in-laws came back to England, they basically put her in school and she grew up here. She went to university. She first of all went to Leeds University and did Chinese because she thought she was going to be the second Gladys Aylward. Instead, she turned out to be the first Mrs. Reed and she became my wife. And um, we were so, so in love. And um, we were committed to one another. I was a businessman at the time. And one thing she'd always said was she'd never marry a vicar or someone in the ministry and when she met me I was a businessman and so when we got married I conformed to a will but she already knew that I had a call of God on my life and from the day we met she knew that but <laughs> she married a businessman and the reason for that was she'd watched her parents suffer um, in the ministry they had a big vicarage it was cold and you know, not the best place to live. And there was poverty there. And so she didn't want to grow up like that. Not that I believe ministers should be poor, but so often uh, they are treated very badly by churches. And uh, it was Anglican church. Now, when we got married, we began to have a vision. And that vision was to really raise up a true church. God spoke to me and my wife and said, you know what you don't want, now build what you do want. And God put in our hearts to do something totally different outside of religion into Christ and Christianity. Now we might get criticized for it because we were firm in our resolution to live a biblical way, to do it the way God said and to give up the philosophy, vain philosophy, that was powerless. We wanted a God who was a miracle-working God. We wanted a God of power. Now, Dima Shikarian, a dear friend, led me to the Lord. He was the founder of the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship International. He and his wife, Rose, brought me into Christ. And I was a policeman at the time, and they led me into life. And my wife and I, when we met, she had met the Lord in a totally separate experience and she'd had a real encounter with God and when we met, we fell in love and obviously we got married and we really had one desire to glorify Jesus Christ, to let the world know there's a saviour. And so we set out on our path and we were fortunate, we met men of God who really challenged our hearts. And one of them was Archbishop Benson Ederhoser. It's just a great privilege to have our brother, the Archbishop, with us again. You know, I always tell people that God sends the best to those who deserve it.
a man of love, a man of grace, a man of faith, a man of fun. Uh, he always had a smile. And one thing everyone says about my wife, <laughs> she always had a smile and she was always welcoming to everyone. And she knew her God and she wasn't ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And wherever we went in the world, whether we were meeting prime ministers, presidents, as we did in many countries, she always had a glowing smile and she was always comfortable anywhere she was. Um, she grew up having at Leeds University, having done Chinese, then she went to Cardiff and did, um, became a child care officer. Uh, she went up to Liverpool and I was in, living in Liverpool at the time and we met there in Liverpool. I remember um, one of the things that happened was we went to, I went to um, listen to a man of God from Romania um, Vumbrandt, and he was speaking there and I went with a friend and there were many people there and my wife was there or my future wife I should say and she looked across the balcony and saw someone on the opposite balcony and God spoke to her and said that's the man you're going to marry and she thought this is crazy I don't know who that is and afterwards when we were leaving the hall uh, we met um, through a mutual friend and that was the first meeting the second meeting uh, she never told me what God had said to her but the second meeting I knew that she was the one for me and God in miraculous ways brought us together and our life together was one of miracles God comes first always always but don't let the next generation of the church be lost they're the future they're the church of tomorrow and all I can say is that God was faithful that desire in my heart that I wouldn't let my children grow up hating the things of God the last thing I wanted to do was that has proved God has been faithful the whole way through. Amen. God bless you all. It's just as if I've never sinned at all. It's just as if I've kept the law in every single point without a flaw. For Christ fulfilled the law as a perfect lamb And it's just as if I did the same What a wonder, I'm justified And I'll always praise his name mm -hmm. He took away that old wineskin Filled me up with brand new wine And took away that stony heart of mine And Christ himself became my righteousness Behold, all things are new Now my nature's dead, I'm his instead And I know his word is true He's No miracles, no Jesus, was our saying. And we wanted to build 
something for God where people could come and they could find the living God without religion, without the falseness, but in power and life where the Holy Spirit would come, fill people and bring them into life. And we had tremendous experiences. My dear friend, Archbishop Ida Hosa, and I traveled together with my wife all over the world. We went to every continent. We preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if we weren't traveling, he would ring me up every week and we would talk on the phone if we weren't together traveling somewhere. And when he went home to glory, I found it was like my right arm was cut off. We were such good friends. And the thing about um, relationship is it doesn't end. It never ends. Uh, when we're one in God and we're one in Christ, even though we might be separated for a moment, we're conscious of the living reality of that person. And so my wife and I um, ministered together and she wrote a book, Hey, everyone, Teens Love Miracles. You know, young people, they need to see the power of God at work. Uh, religion says, oh, well, you don't need to see miracles. Christianity says, oh, yes, you do. And then we went on and became part of Oral Roberts University. And my dear friend, Oral Roberts and Richard Roberts um, were real helps to us. And I give thanks to God for everyone I met. Some of them, uh, I must say, I couldn't say they became dear friends. They didn't. Um, I had a lot of acquaintances. The many people get up and they say things, and then you find a little later that they're not genuine, they're not real. But our God is real. He's the spirit of truth, spirit of life, spirit of miracle power. And that was the life we lived together. And I want to share with you something of her life and our life together, that you might understand the richness of the life there is in Jesus Christ. God bless you.